Okay, I'm not going to get crazy with the details. You know that your microwave oven boils things. If you put water, tea or whatever you want in there and you hit it for two minutes, brrr, it comes out hotter than hell, steaming and boiling. Now, that means it expanded the gases. Water vapor is nothing more than the gaseous phase of water and it expands 1600 times when it turns into the gaseous state. Now, there is such a thing as condensation. What does that mean? It means when you take those things and you condense them, they will turn back into water. But when you have them condensed in the water like that, and you have that surrounded, and you heat that water up, this will explode. Now, if this is tin foil, it goes blip. If this was an inch thick iron, it will still explode, and it will explode like an atomic bomb. And then it's going to be a bad day for everybody. And what we're doing right now is we're expanding our atmosphere pushing against the electrons that are forced against us. We're forcing ourselves out. We're creating enormous amounts of atmospheric, you know, destabilization. It's just insanity. We're pushing harder. And it's 5G is nothing more than a, a combustion of water molecules, which is the ones that really bang each other and, and, and swirl because they're also polar. All right, I just took this off the news. Uh, CBS News. This is Major Garrett. Now listen to this. I'm Major Garrett. More than 30 million Americans across the South face the threat of severe weather tonight. Multiple deadly tornadoes have already touched down. Much of Alabama is under a state of emergency. A large tornado tore a trail of destruction, ripping up homes, uprooting trees, and sending thousands scrambling for safety. Tornado and flash flood alerts are posted across several states, including Tennessee. What I want you to see is, you see how this is rising up? This is a, a, a clash of weather. The Earth is spinning into a, a, a layer, an abrupt transition, basically, of, of water vapor, in my opinion. Now, some of it's dry, some of it's wet. This is obviously wetter coming in from the ocean. Now, this is also now supposed to be dry, and the drier air is supposed to stay low, and the wetter air is supposed to rise up. Well, this is now really wet down here, so it's not going to rise up the way it's supposed to. It's going to turmoil against this in a lower atmosphere, because the heavier, the, the drier the air, the heavier it should be. The wetter the air, the more it rises up. So we're having two competing similar events pushing each other, and that keeps it on the ground. Now, this is exactly the same thing that I am showing. The sun is casting its particles down. They're interacting with our earth that's scrubbing through those particles, and they are it literally forcing against our scrub so it's push to shove because we're shoving them back and in the galaxy you see the arms twist back because they're doing the same thing they're going this way and all of the energy energy is crashing and per pushing back this way you see it all glowing that's what the nature of the universe is and the nature of our solar system and this is what we do ripping through the galaxy and the sun is spinning and it's ripping particles off the sun towards us as we try to catch up to it because it has its dark matter just like everything else wants to tra attract everything to, to the densest part of dark matter. Okay, everything that I have been talking about is explained with electron flood theory which replaces Bohr theory. That is light, pulse red laser, and the particle is way back here, <clears throat> but it controls a huge region in front of it. This is what the particle looks like right here. It's back-to-back -back bar magnets, basically. They're dipoles, and the dark matter has never been seen before. That is gravity. Here's what happens when you accelerate it through a venturi. The particle is pulled right out of the wave, so it's really pulled in front of the magnetism that's following it, and explodes here into ex absolute cataclysm. And we can find new particles that are, are smaller than any of the particles. This is light, and that's smaller than light. This is spinning light to the right, drifting to the left, expanded, compressed, and just to finish this off, you saw the particles, you saw everything else. 
here's what they look like when they separate. When they hit here, the level four banger pops into the black leaves, the white shows up. And then they reattach over here. Because that black ball is the gravity. <laughs> pulls everything back together. Other than that, it has no other value whatsoever. It doesn't, uh, doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't show up whatsoever. The only way Rod got it to show up is by accelerating. You'd never see that back there. You never would have seen it. So the only way you see it here is to remove it from its, well, I guess this is the carrier, they call it, to remove the fermion from the carrier, from the boson. Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. I cover virtually everything, and because everything needs to be looked at again in the new light of Mud Fossil discoveries of, you know, these kind of things that were never expected before, dragons and all kinds of things that really need to be looked into terribly bad because we our, our history is totally wrong. Also, they won't pay any attention to the light research. Now, I am being criticized for doing this over and over and over. Yes, I'm going to do it over and over 10,000 times until somebody of importance, apparently, they think they're important. They're the ones that tell us what we have to believe. I want them to confront what I show. I looked at what they show. I disagree. So it's time to look at my stuff. And I'm saying that everything there is, is constructed of electrons. That's all there is, and it simplifies everything down to this. Electrons are what we consider to make electricity and static and lightning and everything else. And you're going to see all of this in extreme detail in a minute. Photons are two electrons back to back. Electrons burn into things they attach. Photons bounce because they're already complete. Protons are not one gigantic positive. They're 1,837 electrons. They form a, well, it's a hex really, but it's a ball looking thing with a hole in the center. And I show that as well. And there they are right there in the center of the particles. I show all the particles. I show everything. So, you know, to, to not address this is not correct. And I have not had one person address this from Fermilab or NASA or European Space Agency or MIT or Geneva or any single one of the professionals, not one. And I have contacted literally, I, it's got to be 50% of them. <laughs> Every time I hear one talk, I send something, nothing. So, you're going to have to just listen to me, that's all. All right, I'm just showing you this so you understand. I've done this. I know about the bond angles, and I know about the energy levels, and this was a paper I wrote 50 years ago about dipole molecular moments and columbic forces and all that, and I came to a new realization that the professor was not right, and we had it out. And I ended up getting an A because I, he, I knew more than him. I'm not, kid, I'm not kidding you. That's a, just a fact. And we, we seriously had it out. <laughs> and, um, but this is, I did, I knew more than him about everything. This is valence bond theory and about all the different overlaps. This was what they were selling as I wanted to, this is dipole moments and how they, Everything has to be a dipole. And I said, you can, there is no such thing as a gigantic positive core and everything else is negative. And I, I proved it in every single way there was. This is not something you did in 15 minutes. I worked on this for many years. And, and I came up with the conclusion that the nucleus after chemistry, at, the, at this point I had calorimeters, I had all kinds of things. Hold on a second. I, well, you can see, this, this doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on and on. And it gets more and more and more intense. And, and more and more and more calculations. This and that. Hold on a second. If I can find it. Which I cannot. But that's okay. We'll go on to something else. I want to show you the different other things that back up my electron flood theory. Oh, here it is. Here's, here's the book from... These are the other things I did. This was in the lab. I could get in the lab and do heat 
and the heat of re a reaction and stabilization and neutralization and the different like ones that had a lot of electrons when it didn't have as many electrons how they cooled and how they heated up and how you know and it always 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 ended up with electricity it always ended up in electric power i don't care how you do anything electric power is push to shove of electrons that's all it is and now i have proven it okay this man was a genius nikola tesla if you want to find the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy which is push to shove electron to electron frequency how fast you bang them back and forth and vibration which is the pushing to shoving and how hard they move back and forth absolute genius velikovsky was absolutely a genius too destroyed as well as tesla same thing i wrote a book about velikovsky hold on a second yeah, I wrote this years ago. I've never told anybody about it because I just wanted it to go down in history. This guy was right, Velikovsky. It's free. We go. It's mud fossils and Velikovsky minds in collision. He wrote the book called Worlds in Collision, and he had it all down from the history, from the museums, from the everywhere. He he went to everywhere in the world and accumulated all this information. He put it out in a book. They destroyed him. They destroyed the publisher that put it out and said, if you don't take it off the bookshelves after 11 weeks at the top number one of the bestseller list and they had to take it off the bookshelves but another publisher took it so he was still able to have it published but that is the kind of pushback you get from the people that are in power and Mr. Velikovsky, professor, PhD, hero of the world yes he was, he stood up for himself, they crushed him and that's what happens so people don't stand up for themselves that's the problem, that's the real issue with education now we're talking about education. What is education? What are we supposed to be learning? What are we supposed to be learning? And so far, I haven't found anything that we learned that was really factually true. Literally nothing. So if you want to confront me with something that you think is right and I'm wrong, come on down.